Hi everyone, my name is Raif Darazi, and today I'm excited to share with you the Hope Cab animation. This is something we've been working on for months, and it was actually released last week. I've been so busy, so swamped with projects and different things that I didn't have the chance to put this video together until now. For those of you who have been watching my videos in the recent months, you're aware and you know what the Hope Cab is. I'm a part of the Hope Cab, I'm a co-chair of the Hope Cab, and Hope stands for HIV Obstruction by Programmed Epigenetics. It sounds wordy and confusing, but it's really not. We're working with HIV on a genetic level to try to alter its DNA so that we can remove needing to take medication, ARV, ART, and the HIV will be trapped in its state that it's in, no longer able to replicate, and then hopefully at that point we can snip, 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 and cut it out of the body. That's essentially, in a very grotesquely generalized way of putting it, what the Hope Cab is all about. It's an initiative investigating a block lock excise approach to cure HIV. And again, those of you who have watched my videos recently, you are familiar with block lock excise. And I did a video recently about the CARE project, C-A-I-R, which stands for Community Arts Integrated Research. If you haven't seen that video yet, check it out. Uh, we did this arts project with a bunch of HIV cure researchers and scientists, and then I got their input on the art that they created. It was super interesting. I learned a bunch of key terms and words and different things. So check it out if you haven't already. And um, yeah, and then we'll get into this animation. So the, the purpose of the animation is to take something that's otherwise kind of complex and hard to understand by the general public and dilute it down into a very simple manner so that those people who aren't familiar with HIV cure research or languages and vocabulary and all this stuff that surrounds it are able to watch this fairly simple animation and get a general grasp of what it is that the Hope Cab and its, and its researchers and scientists are aiming to achieve. Let me share a little bit about this from our press release. So the Hope Collaboratory is one of 10 Martin Delaney collaboratories to develop cures for HIV. Led by primary investigators Dr. Melanie, Dr. Lish, and Dr. Susanna. Uh, I would say their last names, but I don't know how to pronounce them all, so I'm just going to do first names on all of them. The HOPE includes 16 institutions around the world, so it's actually a global organization, one pharmaceutical company, and various community partnerships. Effective communication between scientists and community members is crucial for the successful advancement of research. It's not just HIV researchers and scientists in a bubble doing their thing and let them figure it out and then we'll have a cure. It needs to be this open dialogue between community and research together in order to get there at least faster than we would otherwise. And so the HOPE animation was led by Dr. Vivian Avellino Silva. Mwah. Love you, Dr. Vivian. The video combines the science of Lock Lock Excise with the artistic talent of community members. <laughs> So I had the privilege of doing the voiceover for this, so I'm really excited to share it with you. Let's go ahead and watch it now, and then we'll talk after. Hope. Hope. Hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. But wait, hope also stands for HIV Obstruction by Programmed Epigenetics. This is the name of a study, including a team of enthusiastic researchers in 16 institutes, six countries, and five continents investigating a cure for HIV using a novel approach known as block lock excise. And what exactly is this strategy? Let's start by understanding that HIV has the ability to infect many cells in the body and use the cell's machinery to produce new copies of itself, which will then infect more cells, leading to damages in our immune system as well as some organs. It can also infect and hide in certain cells. Treatment with HIV medications available today aims to block the virus from creating new viruses, infecting other cells, and causing more damage to the immune system and other organs. When accessible, today's treatments are highly effective and enable people living with HIV to live long and healthy lives. However, today's treatments are still not the same as a cure. The virus remains in the body, and can still reproduce at very low levels, even under treatment in certain body tissues. This can sometimes lead to long-term complications that may still occur more often in people living with HIV and cannot be eliminated with standard antiretroviral treatment. 
Moreover, currently available HIV treatments cannot remove viruses that are hidden within cells. These hidden or latent viruses are mostly harmless, as long as a person remains on HIV therapy. The problem is, if treatment is interrupted, these latent viruses will, sooner or later, reactivate to create new viruses, leading to progressive disease. This means that, today, a person living with HIV must remain on treatment indefinitely. Interestingly, some viruses related to HIV have long been infecting humans and our ancestors, over time becoming inactivated and permanently integrated in our own DNA. Remarkably, about 8% of human DNA is made up of these viral fossils, and some of these remnants have even become beneficial to human health. What if we could somehow make HIV behave like these ancient inactivated viruses? That's what the block lock excise approach is trying to do. To transform HIV from a partially latent virus into an inactivated and harmless remnant in human cells. What are scientists in the HOPE study doing? 1. Using drugs that block elements needed for HIV to reactivate from its hidden state. 2. Editing gene sequences, making it harder for latent HIV to be switched on and turning HIV into a defective virus, no longer capable of producing new copies of themselves to infect other cells. 3. Removing remnants of the silenced virus. 4. Finally, the HOPE study is also engaging scientists, the HIV community, and community advocates together, inspiring a fresh breath of hope in the search for a cure for HIV. The HOPE study is funded by the National Institutes of Health, NIH, as one of 10 research collaboratories comprising the Martin Delaney Collaboratories for HIV Cure Research. The study is led by researchers at Gladstone Institutes, Scripps Research Florida, and Wild Cornell Medicine. This video is the fruit of the HOPE Community Engagement Team, the HOPE Community Advisory Board, and HOPE Ambassadors. All right, what did you guys think? Hopefully, I mean, at the end of the day, more than just being entertained, more than just liking the video, I hope that you were able to understand how we broke down block lock excise and are able to walk away with a more of a fundamental understanding of what it is that the Hope Cab is doing. And hopefully you can share that animation with other people and they can also get a general understanding of what we're doing as well. And and kind of feel like a part of this because it's it's a community, it's a community endeavor. And we should all be excited for each other and with each other as we're working towards an HIV cure. So as I said, I've been really busy this past week or so because I really wanted to get this video out last week on the same day that we released the press release and the official video. But I've had so much going on. And not only that, but Bo, my boyfriend, for those of you who aren't aware, recently got a new job. We were supposed to go on a trip to the Netherlands together for two weeks. We've been planning it for a year. I kid you not, for a full year, we've been planning and getting excited. And this new job was like, sorry, we need you before then. We can't work with you at all on that. So I literally had to cut him out of vacation plans last minute. I'm going solo. I'm doing my own eat, pray, love moment. So this is going to be exciting, kind of scary, kind of intimidating, but um, I think it's going to be really good for me. And so I literally had to take him to the airport on Tuesday, which was today is Wednesday. That was yesterday and I had to say goodbye to him for the next eight months. Just like that. It just happened so quick. Um, I wasn't really like I, neither of us are were really ready for that. Um, it's kind of a whirlwind and he's being thrown into this new job in the Mediterranean. So he's going to be over there for eight months and then I'm going to be here with Dookie. <clears throat> and so, yeah, that's the situation. We're, you know, uh, making it work. Next week, I'm going to the Netherlands. I haven't seen my family in over 15 years. I can't believe that it's been that long. Um, it, It's heartbreaking in a way, and it makes me sad to think that I haven't been able to see my family for so long, and that when I go see them, they're going to be, like, so much older. <laughs> but I'm thankful that I can go now, that I can afford to go, and I'm really, really excited to not only see them, but to see my homeland. This is, that's where I'm from. I was born in the Netherlands. I was born in Utrecht. And um, I just want to go back and I want to eat good food and drink and 
relax and vlog for you guys. Uh, I'm, I reached out to Adam Castillo, who is the London patient. I did an interview with him last year. I'll put a card up to that. If you haven't watched it, it's a really good interview. So check it out. And because I know that he has contacts in the Netherlands and he's actually going to be there when I'm there. So we'll link up or something and, you know, try to put something to, something together for you guys. And um, he connected me with a HIV organization there, reached out to them, we're connected, and I'm hoping that I can go see them at least one day while I'm there and do maybe an interview or something and share that with you all. So I'm excited about that. It's going to be fun. And yeah, there's just so many great things that are happening. I had the podcast recently that I released. Um, it, I don't think there's anything on YouTube, but on um, all my other socials, I put a little teaser to the podcast. You should listen to it. It's really great. Again, Dr. Vivian put that together. It was, I think, like six episodes total, but this one last episode was done in English. So it's really, really cool. I urge you to check it out. Actually, you know what? I'm going to save you the work. I'm going to put the link to the podcast in the description below. So check it out there. Everything you need is going to be in the description below or in a card. So there you go. Please like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell so you get a notification. You're supposed to whenever a new video gets posted. And I'm, I've, I have like three or four interviews under my belt already recorded filmed. They just need to be edited. They're going to be coming out soon. I'm going to be filming more interviews. There's so much content that I'm working on this year. I'm so excited. The ball is really rolling now, folks. I hope you're ready. For those of you who've been waiting for me to get back on the gravy train and do all this HIV content, I hope you're ready. You better have your alarm set for when my videos come out because I will see you soon. All right, cheers. Peace. <laughs>